Actually, brute forcing all of the permutations in Haskell is kind of a cheating because in data list module we have a function called permutations, which does exactly that. So if you apply it to a list of numbers, it just returns all of its permutations. So what we need to do, we need to take a list from one to nine, take all of its permutations. Yes! We have to just take all of the permutations from one to nine and filter out everything that is not a magic square. So we're usually going to deal with nine elements and how to check that such list is a magic square. Well, first, I would like to actually turn it into a square, which is a list of list of integers. And how can you do that? So to turn regular square to a straight list, we usually used concat. So what we need to do, we need to implement an opposite operation to that. So let's quickly do that. I don't know how to better call it, so I'm going to just call it unconcat because why not? I'm not really creative when it comes to good names. So here we're going to take a list of integers and we'll have to return a list of list of integers. And what I need to do, I need to group the elements of that list by three. Um, I was trying to look through the standard library of Haskell, uh, trying to find uh, good functions that I can reuse to do that, but I couldn't find anything useful. So if you know anything that will allow me to do what I'm going to implement right now, please let me know in the comments below. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just pattern match the list, extracting three first elements, and I'm going to simply group them into list and continue the recursive process. If the list doesn't match that, I simply return an empty list. And after that, I have a really nice function that can turn a straight list into a square. How about that? Once we have that, uh, we will be able to take all of the possible permutations from one to nine and uh, unconcat them and turn them into squares. And the next step will be to filter out everything that is not a magic square. And to do that, we need a function which we will call is magic. So let's actually try to implement it. So is magic is going to take a square. By the way, I think un unconcat should return square instead of list of list of numbers because square is type synonym for list of list of numbers but to make it explicit it's better to use it like that so is magic is going to take the square and should return boolean answering a simple question whether the square is magic or is it not okay we have something interesting in the chat yesterday i read about sudoku solver they had to implement a new function a chop uh, let's take a look at that a function this is exactly what we need, but it's a generalized version. So in our case, we group them by three, but that specific function allows to group by n. Hmm, that's pretty cool. So let's actually try to implement our own chop then. Basically what we need to do, we need to take the size of the chunk that we're gonna constantly chop off of the list. And since it's gonna be sort of a generic function, let's just keep it a list of list of integers because with such function, you're not necessarily gonna end up with a square especially if you provide a bigger n so and what's interesting is that uh, effectively what we do here we take first three elements and if we want to generalize it we need to take first n elements and for that we already have a function this function is literally called take which just takes n elements so we're gonna just simply get rid of the pattern matching and take n elements and continue the recursive process by dropping n elements. And what's interesting is that here, if we end up with an empty list, we have to return an empty list. And also, let's actually stub this function. Also, I forgot to provide n here. So if we try to do something like chop three, one from nine, it's a list of list of integers. What if we try to take a bigger chunk? Yeah, it will have a tail, but since we're always gonna do chop three, uh, it doesn't really matter if such function leaves a tail. So now we need to check whether a given square is a magic one. So let's take a look at the definition of a magic square. Each cell contains a different integer and the sum 
sum of integers in each row, column and diagonal is equal. Like in this case, each row, each column and diagonal equal to 15. So we just need to check all of the rows, columns and diagonals. Checking all of the rows is actually super easy because square in our case by definition is a list of rows. So what we have to do in case of, of the magic square, we'll have to take a square and map it with sum. And here you go we get a sum of all of the rows. How to get a sum of all of the columns? We can just transpose the, the square and transpose actually turns each row into column. Now we need to check all of the diagonals. Uh, let's take a closer look at the square. Diagonal consists of the first element of first row, second element of the second row, and third element of the third row. So what if we just iterate through each row and take the corresponding element according to the row? In Haskell we have an interesting operation which takes a list of elements a integer and returns a single element a. So so basically what this thing does, it returns nth element. So we can use that function to take the corresponding elements from the rows. So first thing we can do, we can zip the magic square with an infinite list starting from zero. What it gives us is pairs, first element of which is an index and a row. And what we have to do, we just have to take an element from that row at that particular index for each of these pairs. If this operation took a pair of elements, we could have implemented like so. We could have just map that thing with this function, but it's not gonna work because this function takes list and integers separately. But if we uncarry this operation, this operation suddenly takes a pair and as you can see it actually takes it in the opposite order that we need so we probably will need to actually take that zip operation and swap the order and then we will be able to map that thing with an carried double exclamation mark operation and that gives us the elements on the row and what we can do with them we can just sum them up and as you can see it equals to 15 exactly as we expect but this is only the main diagonal 852 what about this secondary diagonal. Is it called secondary diagonal? I think it's called primary diagonal and secondary diagonal if I'm not mistaken. But what do I know? I don't even have any education. Well, it's actually quite easy if you ask me. To get the elements from the secondary diagonal, we just have to reverse all of the rows of the magic square and suddenly you take the secondary diagonal. So yeah, now we know how to get the sum of the rows, the sum of the columns, and the sum of the diagonals. So let's actually collect that into a single big list that we will be able to concatenate. So first of all, this is how we calculate the sum of the rows. Quite simple because uh, square is the list of rows. This is how we calculate the sum of the columns. We just transpose, turning each row into column. This is how we calculate the sum of the primary diagonal. And this is how we calculate the sum of the secondary diagonal. So yeah, these things actually produce a single values. So we'll have to wrap them into a list to actually make it compile. And also we need to replace magic with s because s is the square that we take as an argument. And if s S is a magic square, all of the elements of that resulting list will be equal to a single number. In our case, if we're talking about the original magic square, it's going to be 15. How to check that? In Haskell, we have a function which is called nub, which is a very, a very interesting. If you apply it to a list like that, that has duplicate elements, it will remove duplicate elements. So it will only leave the unique elements. So if the S is magic and if we apply nub to it, what should we get as the result? We will get a list with a single number. If all of the elements in that list are equal to a single number, we will get all of the number after removing all of the duplicates. Okay, let's actually format it. And what we need to do, we need to take the length of that list and just check if it's equal to one. That's it. This thing compiles and now we have a function that checks whether a square is magic or not. Now, what we need to do, we need to take all of the permutations of a list from one to nine. We have to convert them into squares by chopping into chunks by three, then filter everything that is magic. And let's see what we're gonna end up with. It takes some time. 
and it's actually finding some elements. How many elements it found, by the way? It actually found exactly eight elements. So yeah, what's interesting, like initially when I started to solve that problem, I thought that the scope of the brute forcing is going to be huge. But if you think about it, it's not that huge. It's, it's not even half of a million. Maybe, just maybe, we can get that solution pass with the full brute forcing of the magic squares. So let's actually try to do that. What if we take this thing and put it instead of all magics? Will that pass? Because as far as I know, usually platforms like uh, Hacker Rank, they have a limitation on memory and time. And I was afraid that maybe we're not going to fit into the time limitation. But they don't really state the time and memory limitations anywhere. At least I don't see anything. So maybe we will be able to actually do that. Let's give it a try. Uh, I'm going to take this slow solution that actually brute forces everything. I'm going to run it on their side. And it actually passes the sample test. Let's, let's submit it for, for the final submission and see if it if it passes all of them and doesn't fail with time limit. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you, you can actually brute force everything and the platform will accept that. Overthinking, by the way. <laughs>